Greetings in the name which is above all other names, that of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son. My name is Brian Mason, and this is part two of the Bible study, Sons of God. And it's from 1 John, chapter 3. Verse 2 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And this wonderful, wonderful declaration of being sons of God is that through adoption, anyone who comes unto God through the way that God has provided in accordance with his word as contained in the Bible, can have this supernatural relationship through faith in the atoning blood of the Son of God himself. Isn't this something quite, quite amazing, quite wonderful? A supernatural relationship with God himself. Nothing of that which says, oh, you can't have a personal relationship with God. You can't have Jesus as someone who's, uh, who's, who lives in and through you. That's of the barriers. The barriers which, which looks to have a separate priesthood. Well, there aren't priests under the uh, new atonement, and the, through the atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's one high priest, and that's the Son of God himself. There's no necessity for priests in the New Testament because Jesus came to take away those barriers that when he called, cried out from the cross, it is finished. Well, what happened then? That veil in the temple was rent, it was torn from what? From top to bottom. And it showed that the way was opened. The way was opened for those who come the God-given way, come into the sanctuary. That is the sanctuary of God when the heart becomes the sanctuary of God. No separate priesthood. Because there is that royal priesthood of what? Of all believers. No one is higher than anyone else. Not a pope or a cardinal or an archbishop or anything like that. No hierarchy. It's being all one in Christ Jesus. Yes, there are there are those who who are called of God to to t take to have a particular calling from God. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor or teacher, but not pastor of an individual church. No, pastor in the, upper, in the, the New church, Testament order of what God has brought into place through his word. Pastor, 
is not something a pastor of a church. It is elders and deacons. That's the divine order within the church. Yes, you can have a bishop. Bishop may be the one of the bishop, the leading elder. But even that is not a, a higher position than any of the other elders. And even women can be, be deaconesses. Can't be elders according to the word. Let's be scriptural. Let's be scriptural by keeping to what the word of God declares rather than what man has through tradition brought into being which does not stand the test of the word of God. Because would the Holy Ghost have spoken of the royal priesthood of believers if that was not to be? Altar rails should never be there. The altar rails have brought back the barrier of the veil. It's as though the veil had been put back together as if God had never opened the way to himself. So let's see, you're meant to be a son of God. The church in the main is doing its utmost and has done down the centuries, still does do so, to have a separate priesthood, a separate hierarchy of some sort. Jesus, when he comes to live in and through us, it's his life that's been lived in and through. Yes, he uses our characters. We can be so different from, from each other. But yet it's still him. And he is the one who is to be seen, who is to be manifested, rather than someone who thinks they have, oh, such, such importance, working for God. We don't work for God. No, God does his own work. But he needs those that he can do his own work through. Those who hear, hear the Holy Ghost speaking to them. Those who have also and know to use common sense. And common sense is not tradition. Common sense is being open. To, to step out in whatever is upon our hearts and trust God to close any doors which are not of himself. Here, let me get back on track. Uh, verse 3, And every man that have this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Blessed are the pure in heart. And it is his pureness, his life, the divine in the human. These vessels, human vessels yet filled with the divine 
because it is the divine who has come to take residence within ourselves when we have opened our hearts to him and when day by day and moment by moment we abide in him the abiding absolutely vital not living a separate light from him oh Christianity in the main will have you uh, believing that uh, you are something, someone totally different, totally separate from God himself. In the New Testament, look up references to in Christ. Look up that which speaks of abiding. And when there is that abiding, there is that pureness. There is that righteousness. Not self-righteousness. His righteousness. There is that holiness. Yet it is His his purity, his righteousness, his holiness, transforming and continuing to transform day by day, becoming more and more and more like him. Let's just, let us go. So I brought out the word abiding, and that is key, absolutely key to, re to having that consciousness of the indwelling presence of God. St. John's Gospel, chapter 15. And the seventh verse. Here's a key verse. Have it on your heart, have it written that you can, you can say at any time. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. He doesn't say, you, you shall ask. It is in the plural, ye shall ask. And how do we keep in the abiding? It's not difficult. Because once you come to that position, And coming to that position means that all that would be a barrier has been removed and you've willingly, as the Holy Ghost has brought before you what are barriers, you've willingly agreed to let him change your nature into the divine nature. 1 John 2 and the 6th verse He that saith he abideth in him that is in the Lord Jesus ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. I can't do that if you have a separate life to him. It has to be a life of being one with the Lord Jesus. 
Not anything of oneness. Oh no, no. That's that's heresy. But a one a oneness of a life which is himself and ourselves being not two separate lives, but one life. And it's a life which he himself has the preeminence in all things. And we're not looking to draw attention to ourselves. It's letting him have his way with us. Being as it were submitted to him. Realizing that in myself dwells no good thing. It's him who is the good thing. Not going around boasting of this or that or the other. But in helplessness, realizing that in my helplessness, in my hopelessness, when he has transformed me, And completely reliant upon himself. That in everything that is done. In me and through me. It shall be. To the glory of God. And it's having that pureness. His purity. That cleanness, the cleansed heart, all the time. And should anything come in, anything come and disturb, anything try to take us astray, anything which will be dishonouring to himself, there's always the blood of Jesus there. Call upon the blood. Repent and call upon the blood. He'll forgive. His love is so great. Should you fall or have fallen, come back to him. Repent of what has called you to fall. And in your helplessness, seek the one who is, is the only helper, the only one who can restore you back to God. And you will find that not only does he restore you, he will do far greater than he's done before you fell. That's God. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And there was only one who could fulfill the law. The Son of God himself. He came as one born under the law, and he fulfilled it. And he took it out of the way. Because the law condemned. But the law has its purpose. Because it shows us what sin is. And in seeing what sin is, then will you be open to see the remedy for sin. 
repentance of sin, of sins, and the cleansing of the atoning blood of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. No longer the blood of bulls or goats, or lambs, they could only cover sin. They could not cleanse and remove sin. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. There were those Bibles which, these modern Bibles, they're even going back to what the revised version. Revised version, what? Uh, written by, uh, had a spiritual, spiritualist as part of, part of the uh, ones who, who translated it. What does God make of that? Heretics, heretics. They were Westcott and Hort. Unless they repented of their sins, they're in the flames of everlasting torment, regretting what they'd done. But yet much damage had been done through the revised version, which then become a multiplicity down the years of many versions, which deny the very deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Versions that would have him with an earthly father. Versions which would deny, yes, deny the virgin birth. There were those heretics down the years who deny the resurrection the bodily rec resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us beware of these heretics of the past, and let us beware of the deceivers and heretics of the present, those who deny the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, those who deny the Holy Ghost as being for today, and the gifts of the Spirit being for today. Let us be on our guard. There are so many wolves in sheep's clothing. Test out the spirits, whether they be of God. As the majority in these days under Christianity and church are not of God. And the verse I, yes, mentioned earlier. Verse 6, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, because it's him who abides. And we will not want to sin when he abides. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Because there's the, there isn't that regeneration there. Unless, unless you've been born again of God, you'll only have a theoretical knowledge of God. You won't have the living God living within you. Because you've never known him. This is what the word of God says. The word of God is there to be believed, to be received, and to be acted upon. Is the word of God precious to you? When the word of God is precious to you, then you want to go 
on and on and on. Been going deeper into the things of God and the ways of God and seek nothing else but your life will be a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto him which is your reasonable service and then it will be the Lord Jesus Christ himself who is the preeminent one in all things and basically you are out of it. It is he then who brings glory to God the Father. Thank thee, Heavenly Father, that as your word is opened up by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ, your beloved one, is seen to be at the very center of all that you have to say and to do in this world. And it is for your glory and your glory is through that which is your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.